Now we get to do the fun step, which is assigning volunteers to shifts. So what I'm going to do is to go to the volunteers application. And this time, rather than traveling down the path to, uh, to work with campaigns and jobs that way, because we have shifts already identified, we can go directly to the shift calendar. Uh, what this allows us to do then is to, uh, to move out to the day of the event. And what you're seeing is, is these are the shifts uh, that we've got identified. Um, we have a, a none confirmed for lighting, but two available. We have two actually confirmed for sound tech for 6 p.m., but we only have we have none confirmed for sound tech at 8 p.m. Now this is looking kind of one day within a calendar, but you can imagine if you're looking at multiple campaigns, it can be very crowded. So this is a way to select for uh, specific campaigns and then also for specific jobs. So you can filter this thing down pretty tight and be able to look at it from a, a week and a day perspective as appropriate. So in this case, what I'm going to do is I'm going to going to right click on sound tech so I can create a, uh, a new window, be able to, uh, to access that. And what I'm going to do is to go to the related lists because again, what I'm trying to do is to, to connect volunteer shift with volunteers. So what I'm doing is thinking of it as a related or linked list. So what I'm then going to do is to collect, is connect to the mass edit volunteer hours as a way to kind of pull this together. I'm then able to, uh, to look for a specific contact. So in this case, I'm going to look for, I happen to know there's a guy named, uh, that, that sounds like it starts with noise. So what I've got is Jim Noiser. So what I'm going to do is to add Jim there and then mark him as, as confirmed, but not completed. Completed would be after the fact. And then also uh, I've got somebody else that I can do out here uh, that's uh, a person that we can pull in that's Julie Quieter. And so what I'm also going to do is to mark her as confirmed. What that's going to do is to say for the 8 o'clock shift, uh, this is who I've got going on. So I'm going to, to save that now. It's really important to save because if you actually just click to another tab, you actually lose this information. So uh, you do want to save it. And you've got the option of being able to then shift. So we can shift to, let's say, let's look at the six. And what I've got is Mark Loud and Debbie Sander, conf Sander confirmed for the six o'clock shift. Uh, by, uh, by closing this, what I'm able to do then is to look here. And I can refresh this calendar that we were just looking at. Um, I can go back to the day that we were looking for just to show you that, in fact, it did take. Um, and what I'm able to see is I've got two confirmed for the six, and now I have two confirmed for the eight, uh, but yet to pull in lighting folks. So that would be the next step is to bring in lighting people. Now, another way to get there, as you might imagine, is through this campaigns tab, because what I'm able to do then is to, again, go through uh, the related lists. I'm diving kind of down into this. And what I'm doing is looking at volunteer jobs. Uh, what, and what you're seeing here is I've got two shifts, four volunteers, none needed. Whereas in lighting, I have three shifts, no volunteers, and six needed. So what I can do is to go in on this and say, let's pick a shift just to kind of start it out. And so what I'm going to do is to drive into my related list uh, pick a shift, um, and then go to the related list for that. And what I can do then is to go mass edit, and I can then add additional names. Um, and that would be the same way as having navigated through from the calendar. So now we've got is, uh, is people associated with shifts with jobs. Uh, and now we can talk about some other topics around reporting, but basically that's the structure of volunteers for Salesforce.